And what we are going to do today is look at how I've got my camera set up in my boat to film all the musky fishing and all the other fishing, quite honestly, that I do. Um, I've had a lot of people ask, you know, what cameras do you use? How do you set them up? That sort of thing. So what we're going to go over specifically today is not necessarily which cameras I use, but uh, how I have the cameras that I do have set up in the boat to get the shots that I like to use and be able to put a cool video together. So here we go. So let's start with the cameras on the pole here. I've got cameras that are about six feet up from the top deck of the boat and they shoot the bow and the stern of the boat and can kind of cover any action that happens in the boat as it's happening and uh, they just it makes for a really good way to capture everything that's going on uh, without having to have a cameraman in the boat obviously uh, because all of this is self-filmed we don't have a just a person specifically holding a camera so this is sort of our main cameraman I guess you could call it um, and I want to go over how I set this up because there's a couple different ways you can have this sort of setup. One of them, uh, like a commercially bought way to do it, is with a, I believe it's called a yellow stick, um, and that just plugs into um, your light plugins that you have in the boat. And I don't think it was around when I started filming really, so it wasn't an option. So I had to come up with a way. If I wanted cameras on a pole in the boat, I had to come up with a way to do it, and this is what. I came up with. So the pole itself is three quarter inch conduit that I think I bought at Farm and Fleet. The way it's held onto the boat is I've got this base. If you can kind of see that there. And it's got a ring. I honestly don't even know what this piece is called. Found it at the hardware store and uh, I believe it has something, it's like a for a one inch conduit and, and uh, just drilled couple of holes so I can have some set screws to hold this in place and there's actually a piece of aluminum on the bottom so that this doesn't dig into the carpeting and up from that is the ram mount arm from the ram mount that you'd use to hold a trolling motor in place so this piece right here is the piece that would go on the trolling motor and then of course you've got the arm and then the other ball. So that's a one and a half inch ball. So between that being held tight at the base and this being held up here, this is actually quite steady. So the reason I like that setup is I can, say I'm on Eagle Lake, I can set this up and not have to worry about it all week. I, all I have to do is cover the cameras up. I can run in four foot waves and this thing takes a beating. The other ways, like the YOLO stick, I don't know how, how robust it is for running in waves. Um, the, the nice part is, is once I get these cameras set in the right direction, I don't ever have to touch them. So that's kind of the key to making filming easy, is setting your cameras up and never having to touch them. So that's why I like this setup. Okay, so you may be wondering how I got this RAM mount onto this base. These bases are just tight lock rod holder bases that I've got for when I go out on Lake Michigan. So these are always on the boat. What I wanted to do is come up with a way so that I could get this ram mount attached to this so I didn't have to drill any other holes here. And the way I came up with doing that is I took a ram mount, you know this is a one inch ball but you can do this with the one and a half, and actually found the right thread screw that fits into the tight, like, tight lock rod holder and drilled and tapped into the base of this, put a stainless steel screw in, cut the head off, filed it, and now I can quite easily, wherever I have one of these tight lock rod holders, screw in a ram mount. And then this is over here as a little set screw to hold it in place. So, that is how I came up with being able to put ram mounts in a bunch of different places on the boat without having to drill any more holes than I had to. 
moving on to the next set of cameras. So the next set of cameras are these two that I have right on the gunnel so you can get that shot of a fish going into the net or a fish jumping. Um, you can get some pretty cool shots with these cameras right down on the boat. Um, and let's look at the way I have them set up. So same sort of thing. We've got the tight lock rod holder with a ram out screwed into it with a little set screw. A long arm, ooh, a little spider there. Uh, long arm, ram mount arm with, get this thing out of the way. Another arm, little ram ball that goes to a GoPro mount. And that is the one that shoots towards the back of the boat. And this one, I actually had a plate that two of these sorts of mounts could be uh, with the ram mounts could be mounted but I had this just in case I wanted to grab a GoPro and kind of move around with it I don't do it that much but it just kind of stuck so this is just a clamp mount and these clamps are quite quite strong so I'm not too worried about it going anywhere but that is how oh sun's kind of crummy that's how these two are mounted to the side of the boat and again you get some pretty cool shots of either fish going into the bag or fish throwing a lure. Even if you get a fish to follow, um, you know, that's something that happened in the day. And it's, uh, if you're making videos to sort of tell a story about what happened in a day or a week of musky, musky fishing, it doesn't always mean you're catching fish. It could be a follow, uh, could be a fish that hits and gets off. So these cameras on the gunnel can be pretty instrumental in showing that happen. Another pretty important camera to have is one that you can just use to walk around the boat. You know, once you get a fish in the net, you can use it to swing it around on myself here. Once you get a fish in the boat, you can use this camera to get framed in on that fish, talk about, you know, how you caught it, what you're using, all that jazz. Um, and there's a lot of different ways you can go with that camera. Um, as you can see, I'll switch to this camera so you can see this setup we're using right now. Um, got this from Amazon. It's just a camera holder. And I'll put everything that I've mentioned for the most part in the description so you can kind of uh, either you know click through the Amazon link and find it a little bit easier. Um, but you could use this to hold a, you know, a DSLR, nice fancy camera. I'm using a Samsung Galaxy 6. This works just fine. Um, you know, and you've got plenty of places to put accessories, a microphone, a light, and it just is nicer, especially when you're working around water, to have something steady to hold on to so you're not dunking your camera in the drink. Uh, we don't want that to happen now, do we? The last camera we're going to discuss is probably one of the more controversial ones that I see pop up when we're talking about fishing, especially musky fishing, and that is the chest cam versus the head cam. I am going to go over the reasons that I prefer wearing a chest cam and give you the advantages, disadvantages for both to the best of my knowledge. Granted, what I'm trying to do is different than from what you might want to do, so maybe a head cam is better, but let's go over the different advantages, disadvantages of each camera setup. A head cam is nice because there's nothing getting in your way. That's the number one complaint about a chest cam is your hands are in the way, and that's very true. The head cam does a better job of when you're looking down of seeing a figure eight follow or a, a fish miss, something like that. That is the one advantage that I can find of that setup. Disadvantages of a head cam. If you ever want to readjust your hat, your camera's off. If you want to film continuously, you're running a cord up your neck onto the camera. It's doable, but it's not comfortable. I can't stand having the compression of that mount on my head all day. I mean, when you're fishing muskies for 16 hours a day, it's just, it's not feasible for me to do that. Um, so those are the reasons I don't use a head cam and your audio from a head cam is not nearly as good as one that sits right here on your chest. And that is the reason you see 
a lot of YouTubers, use a chess cam. If you're just looking for little clips of action, head cam is fantastic because like I said, you can see into the water better, you have a higher vantage point, all that. But it's good for about 15 tops, maybe you know, 5, 10, 15 seconds worth of what's going on. The rest of the time, you may not think you're moving your head that much, but you're moving your head that much. I can't stand watching an entire video that is filmed with just a head cam. Um, if anybody out there watches Doug Wagner's videos, he wears a head cam, but he does it the right way and he just uses those little B-roll shots of action and has some main cameras that have uh, the main footage going on. If you're just using your head cam for little snippets of, of the action, that's great. If you're trying to make an entire video with just a head cam, it's not pleasant to watch, I don't think. My opinion, yours may differ, but that's, so I guess those are some of the reasons I don't use a head cam. I like the chest cam because, and I mentioned it before, audio. I don't think people realize how important audio is in a video, especially one where, again, like I said, if you're just looking for little clips and that sort of thing, audio is not, not that important, I guess. But if you're trying to make a video that somebody's going to watch and show them what happened in a day of musky fishing, you want to have nice, clear audio. And one way to get that is to wear your camera right here. Um, there are other ways to do it. You can wear a, a voice recorder and try to sync it up with a video. But the nice part is, is you can sync up the video with the video. It's a little bit easier, I find, and just use the the audio off this um, and use one of the other cameras over top of the of the video when you're editing it um, so and it, it's just so much more comfortable I think I can wear this setup all day long it doesn't bother me I can let's see plug myself in I can run this camera all day long on a loop and not have to worry about um, doing anything and plus it's right here so I can see it head cam you know you don't necessarily know which way you're pointed um, you can use the GoPro app to you know look at your phone see what your camera's pointed at but it's just too much hassle as far as I'm concerned um, that is why I like using the chest cam now the chest cam I use it sits up I don't know if you can see but it sits up a little bit higher a lot of them sit down here that makes a huge difference I've also gotten into the habit of making sure to try to get my hands out of the way when I figure eight. It doesn't always happen. You know, it's more important to catch the fish than it is to get this video. That's what the other cameras are for, in my boat anyway, is to capture some of that other stuff. Does the chest cam catch some stuff that's pretty cool sometimes? Sure, I've got plenty of clips where you can see the fish come in, you can see the fish hit, you can see the fish fighting. Do the hands get in the way sometimes? Absolutely. But that is the only downside I can find to wearing a chest cam like that. So I'm not trying to change anybody's mind. I'm just trying to let people know the advantages that you might be looking past of wearing a chest cam, especially when you're making a video where you're trying to show what happened throughout the day and kind of convey a story of what is going on. That's going to be it for this video. There's so much stuff that we didn't cover. I just wanted to go over <clears throat> the setup that I use in my boat, where the cameras are positioned, how they're positioned there. There's so many more other things we can go over. Which cameras I'm using, what frame rate, um, how they're all being powered, and that will be for another video. I promise I will make that. Although it might be in the garage. It might not be in this nice setting that we have up here in northern Wisconsin. But... Um, I wanted to go over the stuff because I've had questions and hopefully this will help. And if you do have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I will try to answer each and every one of them. Uh, any of the stuff that I use, um, I have an Amazon affiliate link. So if you click through any of the stuff to look at this uh, and buy it, I get a little taste of that. And it helps, you know, maybe buy an extra camera, helps grow the channel. And if you buy anything after clicking through the link, it really does help out. So with that, I think I'm going to get off the water, back to the cabin, and call it a night. So 
I'm going to leave a couple other videos up here for you to watch, though. Uh, please leave us a comment, hit the thumbs up, and the subscribe button. I appreciate it oh so very much, and I will talk to you later. Mm -hmm.